on to the last round of the 15 round World Motorcycling Championships and we go to Australia for their Grand Prix down south near the city of Melbourne. It's about two hours drive at the track, of course, of Phillip Island. Melbourne a host to the World Championship again after a five year break when the Grand Prix was at Eastern Creek on the outskirts of Sydney. Two point seven mile track, four point four kilometers in length. That is Phillip Island, and it is an island. A lap though round the two point seven mile track starts off when you go over the start finish line, underneath the bridge at over one hundred and eighty seven miles an hour, flat out thirteen thousand revs. Then you come to the monstrously fast first corner, the right hander, one hundred and twenty mile an hour in third gear. Stay in third, keep it bouncing off the top of the revs as you come into the second corner, turn two. Second gear, 75 mile an hour. But soon you speed up, go up the box from third to fourth to fifth gear, coming up into turn three. Ease off the throttle just a little and then back on the power for just a second before you come up to the hairpin at turn four. All the way down to first gear, 50 miles an hour. Up to turn five, and then you come up to turn six, staying in second gear, 65 miles an hour. Short shift then from third to fourth gear, into turn seven, the, the long left-hander. Quickly then into turn eight, fourth gear, 120 mile an hour through the right-hander. Have to be careful through there. The right-hand side of the tar isn't as warm as the left-hand side, and so doesn't give you as much grip. And then you go right over the crest of the hill here, down into the bottom hairpin, that is turn 10. Again down a first gear like the previous one, but this time it's a little quicker, only by a couple of hundred revs or so. Straight to third gear, because they then begin to rocket out of turn 11, get building up speed to 130 miles an hour into the last corner, 115 miles an hour through there, and then you're back on the front straight, 2.7 miles completed, 187 miles an hour when you go over the line. Well, Michael Doohan Mania is all around Australia for his home Grand Prix in the state of Victoria, where we are. And in the city of Melbourne, there was a reception put on for the four-time world champion in the 500cc class. He was greeted by Jeff Kennett, the premier for the Victoria state, who's done so much for sport throughout the state with regard to the Motorcycle Grand Prix, bringing it back to Phillip Island for the first time since 1990. Doohan presented with an award for his achievements before he went on to Madame Two Swords with his waxwork of himself. Also, here at Phillip Island, Wayne Rainey with Mr. Sakurada, the technical director for the Yamaha Grand Prix squad, confirmed their riders for 98 with Jean Michel Bale and Norik Arbe. Friday's qualifying took place under threat of rain with cold and gusty winds that upset the handling of the 500s. Phillip Island is located on a cliff top just a few hundred yards from the Bass Straits that separate the Australian mainland from Tasmania. On Saturday the temperature went up and the wind and the lap times went down. Juan Bautista Borja L500 Rock, whose name has been linked with a possible Airtel Honda 500 team to be run by retired Spanish 125 champion Jorge Martinez, was 18th on both days of practice and will start from the fifth row. The Modernus KRV3 ran into serious aerodynamic troubles with front end lift. Kenny Roberts Jr. said it's the worst I've ever had to struggle with a bike. He was 15th on Friday but suffered a violent high sider on Saturday. He was bruised and battered but will start back on the 17th position on the grid. 
For Nabuatsu Aoki, still with a shot at coming second in the 500 championship, it was a frustrating Friday session that saw him back in 14th. This will be his last ride on the technical sports Honda. On Monday, he'll test his new Suzuki for the first time. He ran into a gull at high speed on the track during Saturday's testing. He was 14th on Friday and 16th on Saturday. World Endurance Champion Peter Goddard, who knows this circuit very well and rode the Lucky Strike Suzuki here during winter testing, was 10th on Friday, then dropped back to 15th on Saturday. Wayne Rainey has been forced to drop Spaniard Sete Gibranau from Yamaha Team Rainey for 1998. The kid's done a wonderful job for us. He's got a lot of talent, but we just don't have a bike for him, he said. Sete was down in 21st on Friday, then came back to qualify 14th in his last ride on the factory Yamaha. Jürgen van der Gorberg, the only Dutchman currently competing in the World's Championships, was 17th on Friday and then brought his Joe Miller Honda V-Twin up to 13th place on Saturday. Japanese rider Yukio Kagayama was brought in as a last-minute substitute at the end of the season for uh, Anthony Gober on the Lucky Strike Suzuki. He was 20th on Friday learning the circuit and then moved up to 12th on Saturday. Daryl Beatty, Lucky Strike Suzuki, was formally told a week earlier that he would not be rehired by Suzuki for 1998. This will be his last ride on the Suzuki. He was a strong sixth on Friday, but faded to 11th on Saturday. He may stay in Grand Prix next year, but it could be on a Honda 500 V twin. Frenchman Regis Laconi is talking to several teams about next season and would like to end this one on a positive note. He was 12th on the Tecmas Honda V twin on Friday and improved to 10th on Saturday. He was uninjured in this crash. Alex Barros came in from Friday's practice angry at the handling of his Gassini Honda and then was amazed to see that he'd done the third best time. I feel slow all over the place, he said, but I'm trying very hard. Barros is still waiting for confirmation of an official V4 ride for next season with Honda Brazil. On Saturday, he dropped back to ninth. Spaniard Carlos Checa, movie star Honda Pones, was amazed to find himself over three seconds back of Mick Doohan after Friday's practice. It makes you feel like packing up and going home, he said. He stayed late at the track on Friday night studying videos of practice, but on Saturday he was again eighth. They call him Mr. Saturday because the pattern this year for Doriano Romboni in Astro Azuro Aprilia has been to qualify well and then fade down the field from the start. His Aprilia 480 twin was 10 kilometers an hour down on Duan's Honda. He was seventh on Friday, seventh again on Saturday for a second row grid slot. Luca Catalotta, Red Bull Yamaha, said the team had changed many things for Friday's qualifying session, but that nothing had really improved the bike. On Saturday, the team went back to the settings from winter testings, and Luca improved to sixth. He's in negotiations with Marlboro Team Roberts and may replace Jean-Michel Bale on the Modernist KR V3. After just missing a podium in Indonesia, Norifume Abe, rainy Team Yamaha, came to Phillip Island determined to finish the season with a good result. He said that his qualifying improvements at the latter part of the season are due mainly to improved front end feel. He qualified fifth and was the quickest Yamaha rider. After his brilliant win in Indonesia a week earlier, Tadayuki Okada arrived in Australia amid rumors of a change to the movie star Honda Pons team for 1998. He again chose to ride the Big Bang version of the NSR, the bike that he won with in Centul. He qualified fourth. Takuma Oki, Repsol Honda, knows his way around Phillip Island where he did extensive winter testing, but even so, he surprised everyone by taking third with his V-Twin. By Saturday, the news was out that Takuma Oki was using a new version of the Honda V-Twin, a 1998 motor in a new frame. I not, I'm not satisfied with this result because uh, V-Twin 
before testing, I record uh, 33.9, but today is uh, I couldn't couldn't more. Alex Cuvier Repsol Honda went down on Friday when the wind got under his bike and he lost the front. Cuvier has been third in the last two races. He was fourth in qualifying on Friday, moved up to second on Saturday, but eight tenths of a second off the pole. Cuvier is still not signed for 1998, but he's almost certain to continue with Repsol Honda. It's not too bad. Uh, the, the difference between Mick and me is just uh, it's less than the one second. Uh, during the, the winter, I, I did half second faster than today. But anyway, the bike is, is working very well and um, seems okay. So I think it's possible to be to be with 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 the front. Mick Doohan clinched his 12th consecutive pole position. On Saturday, he was quickest, keeping his record of 12 consecutive poles alive and leading an all Repsol Honda front row. He had his first crash in over a year on Saturday, but was uninjured. Yeah, it's good. I really wanted to get uh, the, the pole position here, mainly to cap off 50. You know, you never know what will happen next year. <laughs> So, um, you know, it, it's good. Uh, the only thing that didn't go to plan today was ended up in the gravel. Phillip Island full of Australian memorabilia for all of the Australian riders. Michael Doohan's image was absolutely all over the place. In the bank, in the post office, at all of the hotels, in all of the shops, and indeed, sometimes hanging from the trees. Thousands of fans converged to see their hero. Some of them got a little closer. But race day dawned fortunately enough for those fans. A little overcast, but at least it was dry. Not quite as warm as the Saturday practice day though. Well, as the Australian national anthem was sung on the grid of the 500cc race, Doohan contemplated life just for a second before he got the 27 lap 500 race underway. Alongside him on the front row were all of his other Repsol Honda teammates. Alex Crivier in second place, Takuma Aoki in third, and Taddy Okada in fourth position, finishing off that front row. Then the leading Yamaha, but this time it's Norik Abe as opposed to Luca Cadalora. Doriana Romboni's Aprilia V twin, and then Carlos Checa's movie star Honda. The Spaniard on the outside of that second row. Barros, the Frenchman Laconi, a couple of twins there. Daryl Beatty, he's unfortunately not starting the race. He's got a bout of flu, and he has been sidelined. Number 24, Takuma Aoki, and then we got number seven, Okada, winner last weekend. The lights go to green. Oh, doing what a start. But here comes Luca here comes, Look at Abe, look at Abe as well. Arbe trying to go around the outside into the turn one. Doohan is lost. It's going to be Arbe. Two Yamahas. But Doohan is fighting back. He almost gets squeezed through the right-hander. Nice riding there from Catalora. But does Doohan have the inside line for the left-hander? It's Arbe from Doohan. It's Arbe from Doohan. Oh, Luca Catalora pushes the front slightly. And as, he, as we go around, it's going to be Arbe from Doohan in second place. Catalora in third. It is Alex Crivier in fourth position. And it looks like Takuma Aoki. Up there, Abe takes a nice clean inside line, gets it skating under the brakes, takes a oh Abe, it's Abe too runs wide. wide, too Abe wide. Runs what a flyer of a start from Abe, who always gets good starts and always starts well back on the grid. This pretty good qualifying from him. Doohan slips past Abe now, trying to hang on. Friday all over again, Doohan. He was two seconds quicker on Friday afternoon, and he's straight out of the blocks here this afternoon. This is what the crowd came to see, and they're absolutely getting it. Abe trying to keep in touch Luca Catalora in third from that storming start obviously staying in the pits for the last possible seconds to keep his tire warmers plugged in on maximum heat 
full advantage, but he's losing out. Oh, he's lost out to a Repsol Honda. Was that Crivier, I, I think? That was Crivier. We got somebody running wide. That looked like Regis Laconi ran wide. Now, as we come on to the start, finish long, Gardner straight here for the first time. Let's see if these bikes are able to close up a little bit uh, on slipstreaming and on the brakes at the end of this long straight. Look at that huge crowd. Abe hanging on to the back of that Honda. He'll want to use the slipstream, but woo, that Honda seems to be able to break away. Doing Abe as quick as that doing scything into the lead already Abe the only person to be able to keep in touch he's just a quarter of a second behind the Australian Crivier in third Cadalora in fourth Takuma Aoki in fifth Okada in sixth position Barros seventh position Jibanao eighth Kagiyama in ninth absent BT don't forget that one through turn three just uh, coming from 160 miles an hour into that hairpin where Abe oh, went Abe wide. Closing, Abe closing on doing there just a little bit. Remember, Abe has been renewed with Team Rainey. Yamaha has made it very clear they have full confidence in Norifume Abe. Wayne Rainey saying the same thing. It takes a couple of years, three years to learn how to ride one of these. Abe, he's a young man still, and he's got the full support of Yamaha behind him. Over the curb cam they go. There's a Medanis. There's another Medanis. There's Kirk McCarthy. Alberto Pooch finished off by Fred Protat on his privateer Honda at the back. Well, well, Duan goes over the crest, but Abe, this is a racetrack that favours people who like Suzuka, and we all know what happened at Suzuka last year, don't we, folks? Yes, Norik Abe on a Yamaha won that race in fantastic style. Well, Abe, interestingly enough, has chosen a medium uh, front, but he's chosen a soft rear, whereas Duan has a medium front and a medium hard rear equal to Alex Crivier, so Duan on a slightly harder rear tyre, but Abe's gone for a soft rear, and let's take a look and see what Kyle Catalotta's done. Catalotta has also gone for a soft rear, but a hard front. Both of those guys on the Yamahas going for a soft rear and maybe hoping to be able to set a quick pace early and not let Mick get away. Alex Crivier, quickest pace of all, a 1 minute 34.9. 1 minute 34.9, even a time like that this early in the race would put him sixth position on the grid. Abe is all over the back of four exhaust pipes of Michael Doohan. We saw it in the 125s and the 250s. You have to go with the group. Doohan takes a wide exit from turn three as they come down to the slow hairpin at turn four. First gear, it'll begin to spin up a little, begin to wheelie as they come up then through quickly turn five. Now we're into turn six. There, that's your first second. There's your third Crivier. Fourth, Takuma Aoki. And this is a battle, goodness me. It's between Barros, Cadalora, Okada, Jibanao and Goddard. Well, Abe riding the wheels off that rainy Yamaha. Luca Carlotta has dropped back, however, on the second Yamaha. He's back in sixth place when they crossed the start-finish line the last time, and I think he's been passed by Okada as well. So Norifume Abe, who's won one Grand Prix in his career, that was the Japanese Grand Prix last year at Suzuka, hanging on to the back of Mick Doohan here at the Australian Grand Prix. Doohan starting maybe to pull out just a little bit. Crivier was actually the quickest on that last lap, but Crivier still has... A about 1.2 seconds to make up over these two. Well, Crivier gave a run for Mick Doohan's money at the Grand Prix last year, even though it was Eastern Creek. And we all know how that finished. Oh, my goodness. Doohan, a 1 minute 34.4. That is uh, that is just a scintillating time. That would put him fifth position on the grid. It's so, so quick. Annihilates Alex Crivier's quickest time from the lap before. There you're leading two, third position, Crivier trying to chase them down past our camera. That's first, second, third, fourth. That's Takuma Aoki. Look at the gap back to Okada just ahead of Barros as they come through turn three there. They're coming past our camera at over 160 miles an hour. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. there's first warning for Abe as Abe lights up that rear tire and that bike uh, not quite stepping out on him. Not a threat of a high sider there yet, but uh, maybe first warning that uh, that soft tire uh, might be picking up a lot of heat very early in the race. It's doing beautiful shots here, beautiful camera angles. Eastern, <laughs> Eastern Creek, if I say that again, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Phillip Island not only produces great racing, but it just lends itself to the most beautiful television coverage in the world. Mick Doohan sliding that bike a little bit now. 
and pulling out a little bit more over Abe. Doing did a 34 floor on the last lap. That was a tenth of a second quicker than Abe. Crivier, um, who was quickest the lap before, had dropped back. They go across the start finish line now. Crivier lost about three tenths of a second to him the last time. Doing just making life impossible for everyone has done a 134.3, and he's taken six tenths of a second from Abe. Rainey took a tenth of a second. Rainey took Crivier took a tenth of a second back from Abe. Crivier seems to be the next best runner in lap times on the track than this man here, Michael Doohan. Here's Crivier. another warning, another warning for Abe. Crivier, that you just saw him in third. He's closing in on Norik Abe. The gap was 1.8 a couple of laps ago. It's now 1.4 to Norik Abe in that second position. So, Abe with that tyre choice, still battling it out, trying to, and he won't be able to hold on to Michael Dern. Look at, look Here's at Crivier. Crivier coming. Here comes Crivier. Now, Abe, he just missed a, <clears throat> just missed a podium position last week in Indonesia. Hasn't had a podium all season. Alex Crivier, since his injury, has finished fourth and then third twice in the last two races. Crivier, the only guy that, uh, that could run with Dern last year. Okada has been the guy this year, but Okada is down in fifth. Already laying down a little bit of black rubber there. Crivier, you saw him uh, light that rear wheel up. Abe's days are numbered in this second place, you would have thought, to say the least. He was 0.86 behind Doohan about so what, was one lap ago to 2.7 miles over the crest, laying a bit of rubber on the tarmac as he comes over that crest. Doohan tucks up behind the fairing in first. There is Abe's pit bull held out by his mechanic, Kevin Street. The gap, oh, Doohan, he pulls out 0.8 of a second on that lap, and we've got 22 laps to go. We're on lap 6 of 27. Well, Doohan continues to annihilate that lap record every lap. He's done a 34.2 now. Alex Crivier with a 34.5, the second fastest man on the racetrack, and he's catching Abe hand over fist. You see Crivier right now behind Abe, tucking in here. And it looks like, as you say, Abe's going to hang on his, his time in second place. Pretty limited right now. Crivier moving right up on the back. of Takuma Oki on that uh, improved, newer version of the Honda V-Twin, hanging on there in fourth place. Jürgen Fuchs, who started the race further back in 20th position, he's been given a stop-go penalty because he jumped the start, so he's going to have a slap wrist when he comes into the pits. Oh, Alex Crivier tries to find it. Oh, he's desperate to get past Arbe, he's hold, Arbe's holding him up, Arbe, the rocket start that he made, it's all gone to waste. Crivier needs to get past Norik Arbe as they come over the crest into turn 10. We're on lap 6 of 27, but I'm sure that Crivier will be able to side past the Yamaha that we're riding on board with in a few corners, two, two corners time, when they come onto the front straight. Building up speed at the moment, up to 130 in fourth, and then coming through turn 12. Onto the front straight now, completing lap six. Okay, we're coming onto the top straight now. We're on board with Abe, and let's see if Alex Crivier, we're seeing him coming up quickly behind us now. Let's see if Crivier is able to get there. Maybe, but uh, yes, he does get a look inside, makes the move, takes the line away from Abe, goes up into second place now. And Alex Crivier having moved up into second with Mick Dewan starting to show all kinds of signs of disappearing off into the distance with some clean road in front of him. Crivier will put his head down now and try and close on that gap. But already in this race, Mick Dewan has pulled a three-second lead. Takuma Aoki, he's going to be popping off now. Norik Abe for sure. Takuma Aoki, number 24. He's in fourth place at the moment, but he's going to be up in third in not too much a time. Fuchs, in the meantime, does come into the pit, does his stop-go penalty. He, relatively speaking, even though he was in 17th position, is out of the running even for the points. Crivier spinning up the rear just a little as he accelerates hard, short-shifting up through turn seven. 120 mile an hour through one of the few right-handers gingerly through there. Remember that the right-hand side of the tar is not as warm as the left. Over the end of the world as they come down through those wretched seagulls into <laughs> turn 10, the first gear corner. Abe goes deep. Takuma Aoki will be picking him off in no too short a time. We're on board with Takuma Aoki from that front row start. Oh, he's all over, all over him like a bad suit. Coming up through turn 12. Now we're on to the front straight. Now Abe should rocket away. 
But Takuma Aoki has got that corner speed, and now it just pulls He's away. Hang on in that slipstream. No chance to pull, to pull past him. But he might try something. He's not close enough to do anything here on the on the first right-hander. And now we're going to come on around and come down to the southern loop. And this is a place where the lighter Honda V4 could have some kind of an advantage on the brakes. Let's see if, we'll, if he can line him up here. The two Japanese riders, the reigning Japanese superbike champion, Takuma Oki, against the... Uh, Yamaha Team Rainey factory rider who won the Japanese Grand Prix last year and around the outside goes to Kumaoki up into third place. So we've got Repsol Hondas running one, two, three. Mick Dewan with a 3.6 second lead. Alex Crivier lost a further four tenths of a second to Dewan on the last lap. And now we've turned the camera around and we're looking out the back of Takuma Oki's bike at North Fumiabi on the big number five Yamaha Team Rainey. Oh, Takuma is quick on this one. Takuma Aoki in that third place. He's now going to have Alex Crivier for lunch. It's going to be a late lunch. It's quarter past three local time here as they come over the crest. The sun right in their eyes. They're reflecting off the tarmac. Takuma Aoki, well, he came here testing for six days here in the summer with not only an Urta test, but a private HRC Repsol Honda test. And he's been here before testing with Honda on other projects. So unlike the disadvantage that he has had so many times in 1997 where he doesn't know a track, he knows this place like the back of his hand. Oh, Alex Crivier has a huge moment, and that gives Takuma Aoki a chance, but it's not going to happen on the straight. No, in fact, Abe. here comes Abe. Here comes Abe using that Yamaha horsepower, and he should be close. He's not quite able to get by. We see Takuma paying the price for not having four cylinders. It's downhill, and the revs just they, just, they just go up through the rev range quicker than normal when, of course, you're on a horizontal playing field. Well, the typical race for Mick doing this season is to, be, to get a kind of a mediocre start, maybe be fourth or fifth um, coming into the first corner, maybe fourth or fifth at the end of the first lap, and then get his tires warm and go to the front. But here, he got a flyer of a start, not quite as good a start as Abe did, but uh, Mick, after his experience last year at Eastern Creek, would not like to have anybody too near him here, particularly number two, Alex Crivier, as we get down to the final laps. Dewan wants to win the Australian Grand Prix to cap off a fantastic season. Last year, a great season, his third world title last year, but the Australian Grand Prix got away from him when he and Alex, well, Alex torpedoed him on the uh, last right-hander about a half mile from the start-finish line. Takuma Oki hard charging with his head down behind Alex Crivier now. Crivier will use that V4 horsepower to get away, but Takuma, through the tight bits, able to come back on him, and looking to the outside, tries to uh, come alongside Crivier, unable to do so, hanging right there, though. Crivier, unable to get away from Takuma Oki. Oki's going to have a difficult time trying to find a way around Crivier and trying to make it stick, because even if he does get in front, you can imagine that that V4 Honda of Crivier is going to be able to make mincemeat of him on that uh, Gardner Street. We're on board with Takuma, looking forward to Alex Crivier. Takuma Aoki's brother, Nobuatsu, is way, way back in 13th position. Just isn't his weekend, but he might have a fresh start tomorrow, to say the least, because he's riding a test session with Suzuki that he'll be riding for in 1998 and onward. However, these are Hondas, and they are streaming ahead. First three places, Crivier and Aoki. Takuma, of course, come out of that last corner. Even Takuma thinks about spinning up the rear just for a second, even though he's giving away about 50 horsepower to Crivier. Past that commentary box goes the battle for second, third, and a losing battle for fourth position. That's Norik Abe. It's a huge battle, a gap indeed, back then to fifth position, which at the moment is being led by uh, Carlos Checa, Barros, and then Goddard, and then a gaggle of five other riders fighting it out for a breast into the first corner as we start lap 12 or 27. Well, for the first time, Alex Crivier was able to pull back a little bit on Mick Dewan, but it was more a matter of Mick slowing up than Alex speeding up. Now, we've not been able to talk to Randy Mamoli in pit lane because we've had some technical problems, but Randy is here and uh, has get, get, get to get up out of the cold wind into the commentating booth for a while. Randy, what do you make of what we're seeing so far? Well, unfortunately, Dennis, I've been trying to run over here across <laughs> so the bridge. You haven't seen it too much. You know, we've been trying to fix the uh, Pastega, the, the, my signal, and, of course, we couldn't do it, but... Uh, to me, at the first first few laps, I couldn't believe Abe. 
one of them flying starts again. But uh, Michael Dewan seems, <laughs> I'm trying to catch my breath as you guys probably hear that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Michael Dewan just seems that uh, he didn't want anybody following him this weekend any more than, than, than what had happened in qualifying. And he's laid a heavy footprint down and he's out there. They're going to have to try to play catch up, but I don't believe they'll be able to do it. Well, here's Luca. He's come into the pits. You uh, mentioned to us before that Luca had started from pit lane because he was trying to use there. He waves to us. Uh, so something obviously gone wrong with the Red Bull Yamaha. And uh, don't ask me to run out of this booth yeah, down there. Would you get out there and find out what's going on? <laughs> I was waiting for you. But uh, what a wonderful job Takume Oki is doing on the twin. He's been doing it all weekend long. Everybody asks how he can be doing it. Well, he's a great rider, as we've seen all season long. Uh, and he's, he's just doing a wonderful job here at Eastern Creek. Eastern Creek, Phillip Island. I've been saying that all day, too. Glad to have something. Well, I'll, I'll pay my $5 penalty, guys. <laughs> or is it five pounds, Toby? <laughs> five Australian dollars. Carlos Checa is coming closer to him. He's gotten past Alex Barros. Sete Gibernau is in seventh place. Doriano Romboni is in eighth. Regis Laconi is in ninth. And uh, Kagayama, who is, re who is riding the Lucky Strike Suzuki up into tenth. Peter Goddard, who was up into as, as high as fifth place, has faded back now up to 11th. And we finally got rid of Randy Mamola. He was up here giving us a lot of trouble in the booth. But we actually, hopefully, will be able to get his uh, radio connection working. So Randy's on his way back down to pit lane. And hopefully, we'll be able to check back in with him, Toby. The battle, as you say, that has been led for fifth position by Carlos Checa is, comp is comprised by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bikes. To see them come across the finish line in front of our box is just an amazing sight because they go into the first corner at over 185 miles an hour, sometimes four abreast, just like 250 race, that battle for third position. Crivier spinning up that rear wheel, lifts the front, gets it a little bit squirrely as he comes down the front straight. Crivier now 6.6 .6 seconds behind Michael Dern, who is just annihilating. Think of any more words out of the thesaurus. Annihilating, pulverizing, shooting everybody else into the... Here we are. This is the battle for fifth. Checker, Barros, Romboni. It is Gibbonau. And then there is Laconi, Kagiyama. They are all up there. And Okada is just holding on to the back of this pack. Oh, look at Laconi with that supreme corner speed with the Aprilia. And remember, it's, 50, it's 30 kilograms lighter with, it, with its, with its V-twin engine configuration over the V4 of Carlos Checker. You can visibly see the higher corner speed of the twin over the four. Remember that Romboni's on a twin. Laconi, Laconi is on a twin. Another another class with two people that have got names that sound the same. Oh! oh no. Boni on the inside takes that place away, takes fifth place away from Carlos Checa. Checa, he's got the horsepower, but Romboni's got the power to weight ratio advantage. You're probably seeing Doriano for the last time on that bike. Uh, you may see him next year riding that bike, but in different colors. They might be with the Serge Rosé organization next year running those bikes you're also seeing Alex Bottos he hopes this is the last time you see him on that V twin because he wants to be on a V4 next year you're seeing Sethi Jeeber now probably his last time on a works Yamaha he doesn't have a ride for next year a lot of guys here with something to prove in the last race of the season everybody wants to make an impression here at the end of the season contract time Carlos Checa doesn't have to worry about a contract what he wants to do is get a podium position well he's a long way from that right now Mick Dewan leads Alex Crivier by seven seconds, then Crivier and Takuma Oki running together, and Nabuatsu, rather, uh, Norifume Abe is dropped back a further four, five seconds off the back of Takuma Oki, but we're still watching this ding-dong battle here for fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth place, tenth place, because we've got Kagayama on the factory Suzuki there as well. The gap between Michael Doohan and Doriana Romboni's pack that we were looking at, just to put the domination of Doohan into perspective, after half of this race is the same exact time domination that Ralph Foreman and Max Biaggi had after the whole of the 250 race. 
that is something to think about. Absolutely pulverizing them. And Alex Crivier has got his head down, working hard here, trying to close up the gap a little bit on Nick Newen. Remember that Alex Crivier had that crash in acid when he seriously injured his left hand. He has to uh, prepare for an operation shortly after the last Grand Prix of the season. He'll have a tendon operation, the tendon to his left thumb. Right now he has no movement in the first joint of that left thumb and not really able to grip the bike as he wants to. Not able either to use the thumb brake, which has become very much a part of his riding style. And he says he really doesn't feel as comfortable on the bike, particularly in the right-handers, when the bike is hard leaned over and he can't get his foot on the uh, on the brake. So Alex Crivier leads across the start-finish line. Takuma Oki right behind him. Nick Doohan is going out. Oh, oh my goodness, Doohan's down! I was just about to say, oh my goodness. I can't believe it. Michael Doohan he had falls! Just done, he had just done a lap record of 134.1, and I was about to say, it looks like he's gone down in turn one. Was oh, there a back marker? dear. Oh, was, was it a back marker? I Nick Doohan had just done a time of 131. 134.1 and set the fastest lap. And what does this guy have to do to win in Australia? Here we go. Here we're going to see Mick Doon. He's all by himself right now. And it looks oh, like the he's, front. And the front is gone. Oh, my and, goodness. And he's he trying to save it, but there's Whoa. no way to save that. Off the track and down. Mick had his first crash in over a year's time in practice when a back marker took him off. But it was an unimportant crash. The great thing about this racetrack, you can get away with a crash like that without getting hurt. There's Jeremy Burgess. Well, the good news, Jeremy, he's perfectly okay. You've won the championship, but Mick Doohan is not gonna win the Australian Grand Prix. And we've got a Alex battle for Crivier. Alex Crivier at Takuma Oki as Mick Doohan waves to the crowd. Alex Crivier now leads the race. Here it is. Woo! Oh, Takuma Aoki could win his first ever Grand Prix. He will know that when he comes over the line this time round. When he gets his, his pit board held out by Hideki Iwano, his chief engineer on pit wall. Out of the last corner, Alex Crivier spins up the rear wheel. They will get to know this information now when they realize that Duren is out of the race. They might even have realized that Duren was out of the race. Now we're on, the we're on bike before. here with Mick. Just a quick glance glimpse of the uh, disaster as Mick goes down on the right-hander and there's the board being prepared that's showing, for Alex yeah that's for Alex showing that Dewan is out because you know Alex is not able to see Mick up there in front of him that lead was about what eight seconds it was when he went down so uh, and Alex is not necessarily going to be reading the board every time he goes across the start finish line anyway Randy Mamola <laughs> You guys might think this is fine. I'm doing a marathon right now. <laughs> I'm going across the bridge, guys. I got my radio fix. Manel Royal sent me over here to go to the interview. Of course, Michael Newton is find out exactly what we just saw. He lost the front. Well, Mick's on a he's on a paddock. Well, he's on a he's on a uh, a bike. He's being brought back into the pits, Randy. So he's probably going to get back there before. Hurry up, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, it's a marathon. I'll be back to you in a moment. There's Selena Scenes, Michael Dillon's girlfriend on the left-hand side with the fair hair, and his, 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 one of his mechanics there on the right-hand side, Dickie Smart. You've always see him in the pictures. What a showdown race we've still got. I was just about to say that this was savoring a genius. We were, we were to be savoring Michael Dillon, even if he won this race by 20 seconds. It's neither here nor there. We can. We, he was going to win this one, but the front just tucked down. Now, there it Dillon, is again. Here you're going to see the front tuck away 120 mile an hour Nick's doing third, about 120 third. this is the same corner Kevin Swans went down on back in 1990 oh, desperate desperate get it up with and that I tell you he's motoring here at a normal racetrack even with air fence and normal runoff area he'd be getting into solid objects about now but he's fine out there the bike's staying away from him that uh, Repsol Honda breaking up out there but that's uh, the least we've got to worry about Alex Crivier has got a pretty good machine superiority here here. He's able to use this V4 along the start finish line, but Takuma Oki hanging on. So then, same tune, different words. I mean, same team, different riders. <laughs> Alex Crivier and Takuma Aoki in first and second position here. Takuma Aoki, rookie year in the 500 class. Only his 15th Grand, well, his 70, 18th Grand Prix. But of course, behind these two, to the tune of 8.5 seconds, is Norik Abe on his Yamaha. But the news is, fourth position, it's that Frenchman, Regis Laconi, storming through on his Honda V-Twin. Likewise, is Doriano 
Romboni in fifth position. So, how many twins have we got in the top five? That's what I was, yeah, we've got three twins running right in the top five. This racetrack, it has a fast start finish uh, straight. The Gardner straight here, but the rest of this place is, is kind of like, well, I don't know what it's like. It's like acid in, in, in a sense because you've got these sweeping corners that hook up with each other. The difference being that it's a much wider racetrack. Takuma Aoki putting up pressure on Alex Crivier. And let's remember, Alex Crivier still not 100%. This is the first time that he's had to really ride in pressure during the final laps since his injury. Oh, my goodness. Eight laps to go. We're on lap 20 of 27 that we have just started. There is a lonely third position of Norigabe. And it's a ginormous gap back. The, the whole front straight and the rest of it back to the battle for fourth position that yet has not come over the line. It comes over the line in just a second, and it is indeed Romboni just from. It's actually Kagiyama who's come up there. Kagiyama is leading that battle for fifth position, but with eight laps to go, we'll be back for the best of the 500 race on Eurosport. It's going to be one hell of a way to wake yourself up on a Sunday morning. <clears throat> wasn't going to uh, come apart before the end of the race with the track condition so cold it's hard to actually get going i could have i could have been pulling away quicker but i didn't know i was trying to conserve the rear i wasn't spinning it up the front really wasn't a concern it was pushing a little bit but not once as a push there all weekend and i just tipped it in there over them bumps a little and uh the thing folded and uh i tried to I tried to pick it back up with my knee, but uh, it just kept uh, falling and falling and falling. It wouldn't come back, and uh, in the end, it was just down the road. Uh, as far as I can see, you seem to be unscathed. Uh, any, any damage to your body? I haven't had a look at my knee at the moment, but I've worn through my leathers where I've tried to keep keep the bike up, and uh, you know it feels like I perhaps might have taken a little bit of skin off, but that'll be about all. Listen, you're a great ambassador to our sport and a great world champion. We'll see you next year. Thanks, Randy. Takuma Aoki leads the race just, but Alex Crivier takes it back as they come up to over the crest of the hill. Oh, brave manoeuvre there by Alex Crivier. We've got a race here to say the least. Crivier leads from Takuma Aoki in second. Norikabe 14 seconds back, but Duan was on the same combination of tyres front and rear as indeed Alex Crivier. The only difference between Crivier and Takuma Aoki, even though Takuma is on a, is on a, a lighter machine, is that Takuma is on quite a very soft front tyre and a, likewise a soft rear. Yeah, of course, this is a much lighter machine, less horsepower, so it's not comparable. The only thing we do notice here is that, yeah, actually both the Molinus or one of the Molinus also went for this super soft front tyre that Takuma Aoki's gone for and he's got a soft rear. Also, the uh, Honda Pons riders, Pooch and Cheka, went for super soft fronts. Rivier still leads as he comes around the long, long left that brings him down onto that back straight at over 160 miles an hour. Underneath the bridge, comes up towards the hairpin. Now this is the start of a section where Takuma Aoki and the Honda V-Twin will begin to be superior over the slightly heavier, by 30 kilograms of course, the Honda V4 of Crivier. This is an excellent opportunity to just take a look at what it's like to run a V4 against a V-Twin when the V-Twins were first built by Aprilia. Of course, they were 400s. The idea being that on a rider's track, uh, like this, perhaps the uh, difference in, in weight could be, uh, could be enough, could be significant, could allow the twin cylinder to make up uh, the lack of horsepower on the 500. Well, we saw Takuma Oki put a wheel in front and then actually go past Alex Crivier. He didn't lead for an entire lap, but he did lead for about four or five corners. Crivier's seen that now, and uh, of course, this race could easily be decided on the last lap coming out of that double apex uh, um, right left-handed that we're in right now, and if that's the case, you can figure that the V4 is going to have the advantage. Takuma's got to stay. He tries to run alongside him. Uh, now he's going to have to get back into the slipstream. Oh, and, he, and of course, that start finish line is the finish line is far enough away from that corner so that coming alongside is not going to work um, because the power of the V4 will pull Crivier clear of him. Well, Takuma Aoki had that slingshot onto that front straight. We've got four laps to go here at Phillip Island. We are on lap 24 
and we've got to complete this and then three more there are your results so far Arbe in a different league in all due respect to him these Repsol Hondas just streaking away we're on board with Takuma Aoki he's trying to find the inside line up into the hairpin this is oh, where he did it before this is where touched. he did it before they very nearly touched there I don't know if they, they did, did touch. they did Alex Crivier goes deep but Crivier comes up alongside him for the next corner which is a left-hander so we're in for a real battle here well we were talking before the race and um, we said that maybe Alex Crivier has only got the, the blood cold enough to run with Doohan and almost have the, if I can call it, cheek to try and take the win away from Doohan like he tried to do last year. Doohan streaked on into the, off into the distance. He fell on lap 16 at the beginning of lap 16 with over a seven second lead and now that has handed to the lead to this man here, Crivier number two and Takuma Aoki number 24. Takuma, dear, Aoki, dear. Takuma Aoki, the reigning Japanese superbike champion now. He has not had a look at it, not had a sniff of first place in a 500 race and you wouldn't think he would riding the beach win but he has a real opportunity here today not just because this new improved version of the Honda V4 is going so well. They're going across start finish line now and coming down to the um, fast right-hander where Mick Doohan crashed, but also because Alex Crivier is not 100%. He's got that left-hand problem, and that could become a factor in this race. Mola, we're talking 28 to the dozen. <laughs> what, what's your viewpoint so far? Incredible race. Yeah, I think I think what uh, Takuma is doing is uh, is fantastic, and what he needs to do if he wants to win this race is put pressure on Alex to see if he can make Alex make a mistake in the last three laps. Without a mistake, with Alex, I think Alex pretty much has this this race covered, un unless of course he pushes the front and drops it. But uh, uh, what I'm seeing right now is a fantastic race between these two. Uh, Takuma has no chance of keeping that four-cylinder behind it down that long straightaway if it comes to that last corner. No, he would he would need, wouldn't he, Randy, to, to pull out such a lead. Uh, he'd have to pull out such a lead that uh, Alex couldn't get back on him, and that's just going to be really hard to do. Right, that's what I'm saying. If he needs to push Alex like he's doing right now and to see if Alex can make a, a mistake. But Alex is looking sweet right now. Uh, not putting in any wheels out of place, and uh, it just really might have picked up the pace a little bit uh, la that last lap. Well, he did 35-2 on the last lap, and uh, Takuma Oki did the same. To put that into perspective, Nick Doohan, when he crashed out of the Australian Grand Prix while leading, had just done a 34.1, just gone across the start line with that speed. He was coming, we're on bike here. It was Nick Doohan actually in that place on the racetrack, just tipping it into that right-hander when uh, when he went down. And you see Alex just did a 34, so oh. pulled the three tenths out on that lap and you can see the difference right there on our camera. Takuma Aoki's wife there nervously on pit wall with Takuma Aoki's ch uh, chief engineer Hideki Iwano there and they are biting their fingernails. Let's not forget third position man Norik Abe on his rainy Yamaha but it's Okada who has come up into fourth position who was all the way back in about 11th 12th position and he is now leading that other pack. Now, Okada's come up into fourth position. He's still 10 seconds back of Abe, but look at the lap times that Abe's doing. Abe did a 37.6, and, and uh, Okada did a 36.0. That's 1.6 seconds quicker. There he is at the front of this group. He's come through and passed them all. He's got Nabuatsu Oki behind him now. There's Laconi and Barros on the two twins through over our curb cam at over 160 miles an hour as they come into this bottom hairpin. We have got one and a half laps to go. Laconi, the Frenchman, is fighting like a terrier. He's got his teeth into the ankles yeah, of Daddy I, I, was, I was talking about the gap between, between fourth and third. Oh, somebody's it... gone! Somebody has run Boney! Or is Nobuatsu Aoki? aoki has gone down and he's obviously blaming somebody else for it from the gestures. Oh, hi, well, He's not a happy camper. That's his uh, last ride on the Honda. He'll well, be he's back a, here tomorrow to ride the Suzuki. He's a very placid guy. I can yes, tell he is. That. I, you're absolutely it right. Takes a lot to least, annoy him. The least likely guy to. Uh, let's see if we can catch anything of it. Barros. Well, I wonder Barros, if it had yes. anything to do with Alex Barros. Yeah. Well, Barros. Is, <laughs> Maybe. Barros, this guy's knocked my my headset off. That's right. So knocked my headset. So that's the second guy. Oh, we're on the last lap now with Alex Crivier leading and looking like he's on his way to what would be a tremendous victory here in the Australian Grand. 
Grand Prix, it would be his sixth 500 win. Alex Crivier leads by 1.2 seconds from Takuma Aoki as they come down to the first hairpin. They just have two-thirds of a lap to go. Takuma Aoki, I don't think that front tyre has managed to last the whole race. Dear, oh dear, two times in Australia we have seen in the last two years one hell of a race. And we've had another one here today, whatever happens in the last half a lap. Crivier on his way to his second 500 Grand Prix win in this year and it's going to complete a clean sweep for all four bikes through uh, distributed through three winners in that Repsol Honda team. Doohan led uh, by over seven seconds and yet he fell on the 11th lap. So Alex Crivier, who won the Spanish Grand Prix in Jerez and was the only guy to beat Mick Doohan up until Okada did it last week in Indonesia, then had that terrible crash in Assen. Now looks like he's on his way. He just has to bring it down the start-finish line, zoom across the start-finish line. That'll win his sixth Grand Prix. A win for Alex Crivier. Crivier wins the race ahead of Takuma Aoki. Oh, my goodness. They are absolutely excited on pit wall he punches the air well to finish first first you have to finish I'm afraid and he finished ahead of Takuma and Aoki. here comes North Fumiabe going for his first podium position of the season he was so close in Indonesia last week he's gonna bring the Yamaha team rainy machine home with third place and that is a uh, good omen for next season Abe comes home third, and it's just look at the battle at the top of your screen for the battle for fourth position. It's been battled out by Okada that gets it. Laconi gets his best ever Grand Prix finish in fifth position on the twin. Okada fourth, Laconi in fifth. Sete Jibba now completes Yamaha Team Rainey's uh, celebrations in sixth place. Kagiyama and Barros. Randy. Yes, I'm in the Yamaha Team Rainey pit with Wayne. Wayne, what a great way to end the season. Uh, the two boys were in the top six. Uh, what can you say? Yeah, just a little bit late. That's about all I can say, Randy. But uh, this is the last race. Everybody's safe. You know, uh, Abe got third, which is a good way to end the season. And also Sete with his best finish at six. So Team Randy's partying tonight. Uh, <laughs> another thing, Wayne, is the fact I know that Yamaha's been hard working to catch up to, to, to Honda. What Honda's been producing out this year has just been fantastic. So uh, you must be very happy with them as well. Yeah, as you can see, Randy, with his third place and also Sete at six, we've got our new parts on. So... We're going to be strong for the beginning of the year. Thank you. Souvenir hunters there for the smallest possible part of carbon fiber of oh. Michael Doohan's trash fairing that fell <clears throat> on, it was uh, 11 or 12, it's neither here nor there. He didn't complete the race. He fell when the front tucked at over Well, here comes Well, here comes the track invasion that everyone said would not happen. And Randy Mamola in pit lane, you're going to get swamped. Everybody I'm comes running. over the fence. I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's fantastic atmosphere this whole weekend long. And, uh, you know, it goes to show. That, uh, that when you have a local hero or, or a hero from a country, what it does to uh, Grand Prix racing. Everybody swamps towards the podium to see that man there, Crivier, get his second win in 97. What a return after Assen. If that was the golden rule that you're always told when you start off in motor racing, and I'm afraid Doohan, he put it down the road when he really didn't need to. Abe waves to his pit crew. He gets his first podium position in this year. They are pretty happy with that one. His girlfriend, there is Mr. Abe. There's his father there with the jacket congratulating all of the mechanics. There are your final championship standings, Doohan. Second place, Okada, Aoki in third, and Alex Crivier, fourth position in the championship. But Duran comes out on the podium, but let's see what he has to say. Yeah, there's not much to say, really. Uh, you know, the cold conditions here, have, it's been hard with tyres because we're so aggressive on the tyres here, but being so cold, it's hard to try and find a happy medium. Um, the front tyre wasn't causing me a problem all weekend. Uh, we did change the suspension from this morning to this afternoon, but only minutely. The rear tyre I was concerned about actually coming apart and um, so I was conserving this and I wasn't spinning the bike up so much so I looked a bit nervous because I was, wasn't spinning it. Just to try and conserve it I knew if I got to eight laps to go I'd have no problem with the rear tyre and I could actually start to get a little bit aggressive which would make the bike a little smoother. But coming down into turn one I just hit those bumps and, uh, and the front folded.
and there wasn't much I could do. I tried to save it as long as I could, but it just kept falling down. And uh, it's uh, just one of those things, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I, last year, Alex running into me. This year, I'm taking myself out. I just can't seem to do it here in Australia. Well, there's the race confirmation results. Crivier wins ahead of Takuma Aoki. He's be equaling his best finish in a Grand Prix off his wildcard ride in Japan of years ago. Champagne fight on the podium with Grivier, Takuma Aoki and Abe. Uh, yeah, today Mick crash. If Mick no crash, I'm false. So I'm I'm happy but not so happy. And uh, first the second lap is not so bad but uh, after after third or fourth my rear tire is very quick, quick down, so I can't ride fast. But uh, my, my this year, first time podium, so I'm happy. Yeah, you never know. Uh, I did about the start, and I was second. Mick was leading, and in front of me about three seconds maybe. And suddenly I saw Mick uh, that was crash, you know. So I said, okay, you can you can get this this Grand Prix. So I win, and it's fantastic. You know, to finish the, the season like this is the, the best that I can expect. Well, the crowd come around the podium to congratulate everybody here at Phillip Island. That's it for the 15 round Motorcycle World Championship. I have been privileged and happy, and it's been a joy to bring you all of the coverage through the year. Let's hope you all enjoyed it. Let's look forward to 1998.